Oi? It's a pleasure to me, for me to be here in this long house because I come with news from the East when us, the Uruguayans, are also people of long house. Well, I will try to give, to, to explain you or to present you how I try as a curator last year in Quebec. Uh, how this one boom, this small one, became radical art as a sculptural garden, as performance, as spoken word, as a, a visual, a <coughs> political photography. And how this one boom, which symbolic new alliance, also means resistance. Because when uh, uh, we talk since the beginning of this column about historic memory identity, but it means also to replace in history. And how during the festivity of the foundation of Quebec City, who means the beginning of the French colonization 400 years ago, we have to, as Aboriginal artists, intellectual, and also citizen, to remain, remain in memory that we were here more than 12,000 years ago. So, um, my work as an independent curator and an artist and a teacher has been very exciting. Just recently, I have been awarded um, a BC Arts Council grant to work with uh, Deborah Sparrow to learn how to weave. So that's one thing as an artist, I'm really <laughs> so excited about it. But um, my recent work is with the Victoria Art Gallery, and I will be um, working, bringing together a weaving exhibit to um, share with uh, people the Coast Salish weaving, and it has, it's going to have an international scope with the Hawaiian uh, weavers, Alaskan weavers, and uh, Navajo weavers. I've just started my project, project and it is uh, a project that has kind of three steps. Um, I'm the guest curator for one year, under, uh, working with uh, Lisa Baldezera towards this catalog and exhibition for 2010. more uh, hidden uh, areas of the park in terms of how we think of Stanley Park. Uh, and then of course, um, we're also bringing to it our own um, personal uh, ideas of the park and experiences. So I'm just quickly going to talk about, um, we just recently finished our ephemeral projects, which were uh, supposed to be sort of a very short term piece uh, in Stanley Park uh, that helped both sort of introduce us um, to the forest uh, in terms of working there. So they recently have all been completed and will be launched on the 19th of November. And you can look at um, uh, both Cease and my work and the other artists' work at the Stanley Park Ecology Society, sorry, not the Stanley Park Ecology Society, but the Parks Board website on the other Stanley Park Environmental Art Project. You know, I've grown into the name that I have and I continue to grow into it. And I'm also connected to many, many nations and who I am and, and what my ancestors have given me. So, um, so that really gave me a great deal of strength and a great deal of pride to do this work. I've been predominantly a media artist, so, uh, but I have uh, quite often touched my foot into the pool of public art. Uh, for example, at, at Science World I spent two years working with a bunch of youth, about 40 youth on seven different projects that were public art in Vancouver under an organization known as Collective Echoes. And so it was kind of funny because I didn't feel I'd ever done public art even though I'm realizing since then that I've actually been doing a lot of public inter intervention with the land for many years. And this song is from Aunt Sally, who's also known as Sequalia. And this is her song that she sang at Hue Hue, across the water to Malchison, to Slahan, to all the villages on the North Shore. And it's a beautiful woman's song, it's powerful, and it is greeting of the day.
And what I'm focusing on is uh, this indigenous way of knowing that some of the things we hear today or how we're contesting for space and we see it in various forms through the media, through visual, uh, through virtual projections on the buildings. Um, architecture is just my passion that, that I think we identify a lot of it. We see it in our traditional structures we see it today. Um, very fortunate, very fortunate um, to be here today and, and to see where we are and how lucky the Vancouver community is to have something like this, uh, the Museum of Anthropology, um, a lot of West Coast art. Um, the reason I say that in Toronto, anyone who's familiar with it, if you look around, do you see anything like this? Do you, do you see the youth make a big move? Do you have the urban aboriginal strategy? Um, we're looking for ways to get into the academia. We're trying to address some of the major issues. So that's what the course I'm taking is all about. Is like it's about the of change and how we can use architecture to push the boundaries and re-establish these identities. So what you see here, meaningful change is built upon meaningful evidence. 